So let's return to our main text here. Gentleness. Goodness. All right, so the next fruit of the Spirit is goodness. Goodness is actually where you show good, goodness toward a person. This is especially proven where, at, where you read at the book of 1 Peter and nearly every Pauline epistle where Paul says when the enemies persecute you, you're supposed to show them goodness. That's what you've got to do. A lot of these uh, weird little strange cults who are filled with hate and then they'll say that homosexuals can never get saved. They're lost reprobates. And then they justify themselves by singing some hymns about, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And they, it, the, song, the songs are not even that good anyway. And they'll sing all these kind of songs from the Old Testament when they got to realize dispensationally that's Old Testament. Amen. The verse shows that you got to show goodness towards your enemy in the New Testament. And then a lot of people don't like those verses. Some of them will get around it by saying, no, it's talking about my own personal enemy among the brethren. Well, no, it never said that. Where's the verse that says that? As a matter of fact, if you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, it shows lost people that you have to show goodness toward. And we read that passage at today's morning service, right? Today's main service is that when they persecute you, accuse you, falsely accuse you, you don't return the accusation. Instead, you're supposed to show goodness toward them. And that's a fruit of the Spirit. What does pastor do when uh, members talk bad about the pastor? Show goodness. That's what a church is supposed to do. Okay, the next one. Faith. Okay, faith is probably the most important thing that will help you, that will help you with any trouble that you go through. But what's greater than faith, surprisingly, is according to 1 Corinthians 13, which is concerning love in action. So better than love, it's love in action, charity. But aside from that, faith is probably the most important thing that will help you in your life. You might say, how so? Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. In, without faith, you literally cannot survive. Let me give my life for an example. Uh, I started out at early 20s when I started a church over here. And what I had to do was blind myself to all the temptations that other young people go through at my age. I had to blind myself from the problems that were going on in the church. I had to blind myself from impossible situations on how to develop a ministry or the size of the people or my own mistakes too. I had to blind myself from my own mistakes. What did I do? I completely relied on God that he would take care of everything. By doing that, it rescued my life and this church every single time. Now, for some of you, especially who knew me or where I was in the phase of trying to search for a new building, remember how impossible and bad it was? And I would mention, like, I would try and would try and would try. But then how much do you have to pay per month for your own office space? Like five grand almost. So it's pretty bad. So then what did I have to do? I have to completely have faith. And some of you, I told some of you this, is that, man, it's so hard and it's difficult, but, you know, the Lord proved to me over and over again that he'll take care of it. So I know he'll give us a building. I know that. And guess what? Didn't we get one? Yeah, we got one. All right, we got one. So the Lord definitely take, takes care of things. If you don't have faith, you will compromise. If you have faith, you're going to yield into the temptation. If you don't have faith, you're going to do things your way rather than God's way. It is absolutely important to have faith. Also, if you don't have faith, you're going to be afraid to go to the next level for God. A lot of people are afraid of doing more things for God because they don't have enough faith. Now, you need to have faith now. Okay, the next one, verse 23, meekness. Okay, so meekness is humility. These two are the most important things that will save your life. Meekness is one of them. This one is obviously the most important to God. 
for your maturity in life. And then these two are probably the most coveted things that everybody wants in life. And then these two things are the most despised things that people want to do, this one too, in life. But these two are the most important things that will help you survive. Why meekness? Meekness is humility, being meek, being quiet, being humble. Why is this a survivor? Because I can't tell you. Every stinking time, which makes me so angry, where there's a preacher who preaches a really great sermon, builds up a great ministry, and even those online, they lack this. They develop their own strange little world. They feel like that because they teach great, preach great, and they affect it and touch so many people's lives, they feel like they can take a little bit more freedom now in critiquing other Bible-believing preachers into being a little prideful, oh yeah, I'm the only Bible-believing ministry over here in the whole world, and I'm outside in the middle of the woods, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Dr. Upman, you know, took me out of the church and misunderstood, and blah, 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 blah. You know what that is? That's pride. Yep. And people will put, pull up fake, they will show meekness. A lot of, th these are even worse. A lot of people will show meekness, but their fruit is not meekness. Remember, don't confuse the work of the flesh with the fruit of the Spirit. They're pulling a work from their flesh to show meekness. That is false. It should come in naturally with the Holy Spirit guiding you. That's completely fruit of the Spirit. Meekness is where you recognize that you're definitely not a good preacher. And when people accuse you for pride and arrogance, you don't care because you know that you're right with God and you'll do it. I'm not a great preacher. I will kneel behind the pulpit. People will say, oh, why would he do that? You know, he's just putting on false humility. I don't care. True humility I, is I don't care about what I look in front of your eyes. Right. It's what I look in front of God's eyes. Don't let these fakers fool you about their meekness, okay? Their humility. Don't let these pretentious fakers fool you on that one. You got to... Do it purely from the fruit of the Holy Spirit, where you're able to take in criticism and say, I'm wrong. That's what you got to do. Okay, then. So if you do that, then what? The Lord will exalt you. He will bless you. He did it with my life. I can't stress so much that this is a very important, and then God will change your life, bless you so much. How, you become a better, how I became a better pastor, better preacher, better teacher, was not my own efforts, but realizing that I am truly nothing and that I needed God. A lot of times when I go up to preach, I would still remember that fear of not doing well in preaching. Today, this morning, I don't know if the preaching hit you, but I had that kind of feeling like, God, I can't preach this right. And with that kind of humility, then the Lord can use you. He can use you. Okay, the next one right here, verse 23, is temperance. Temperance. Okay, this is probably the hardest thing. So these are the most despised things. This one's the hardest. Temperance is where you're able to temper, self-control. So if you want to get one of the hardest crowns to win in heaven, in my opinion, is the incorruptible crown. And that ties into, let's look at that verse. So keep your hand over here. So we'll look at that verse together. Let's look at the book of 1 Corinthians, shall we? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And then we will look at verse 25. Verse 25. The incorruptible crown is rewarded to a believer who strives for temperance. So temperance is very important because what it will do is that it will definitely give you this incorruptible crown. So how good are you with your anger? How good are you with your mouth before you say something wrong or give an accusation? Before you jump the gun and take shortcuts and compromise? Before you yield to temptation and sin? All it comes down to, it boils down to, is self-controlling this flesh. How are you in your Bible reading and prayer life? Are you keeping up with it? See, self-control, training. The verse says right here, we read it before in our previous Galatian studies. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. 
Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So that's found at verse 25. So this is probably the hardest fruit. Maybe that's why the Lord put it at last. I know why the Lord put this as first, though, because this has been the most important thing to God for your own Christian maturity, is love. Okay, let's return to our main text. Okay, so now we covered all the fruits of the Spirit, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. I would highly recommend the discipleship. It will explain all these things better. And they that are Christ, okay, so do you belong to Jesus Christ? Yes, okay, and they that are Christ, what did you do? Have crucified the flesh. So you crucify, you nail your flesh to the cross with what? With the affections and lust. Now this verse is important for people who confuse emotions with the Holy Spirit. Some people think that if they shout louder or run around louder, or, some, or they preach more dramatically, that would stir up the emotions, they're more spiritual. Absolutely wrong. That can be a fleshy thing. Some people think as long as you cry even harder on the altar, or you get moved when you're hearing some Hillsong music and then you're swinging like this, or some electric guitar and drum, why do they need the electric guitar, need the drum? Because it pleases the emotions, stirs up the emotions of their flesh. So when you rely on those things, that is not the Holy Spirit. Amen. You never confuse the Holy Spirit with the emotions of the flesh. The flesh have affections and lusts. So now if you remember in our studies on Galatians, Paul mentioned at Galatians 2.20, which you might recall, the crucified life of a Christian. So Christians go through a crucified living. In the crucified life with Jesus Christ, what we are to do is that we live in our flesh. So the outward man, the flesh. And then the inward man is the Holy Spirit here. So here you are with the Holy Spirit trying to go by what? These the fruit of the Spirit. This outward man contains affections and lusts. And Paul says that these things are supposed to be crucified, made dead, made dead. So when you feel these things, you got to make them dead to you. Oh man, uh, you're, kill you're killing the music, you're killing the mood, you're killing everything when you take these things away from me, Pastor. That's too dull, too bland, you know, too boring. No, that's good. We're killing what you're feeling. That's good. Boring. Whatever you want to use, it don't matter. One, if you're truly guided by the Holy Spirit, it's not boring. Right. But two, when you feel like it's boring, it's so obvious because you're so used to how you feel in the flesh rather than what you sense in the Holy Spirit. So because this has been, become pretty much dead to you and this one's become much more alive to you, you're concentrating more on what you sense and what you feel, your emotions, where your heart is moved through this outward man here. So parents, don't get hurt, don't hesitate when you take away their garbage music from your teenage daughter and teenage son and you kill what they watch, take away their video games, the company that they're keeping around, you tell them not to hang around them. Oh, mom and dad, you just don't want me to have fun. Oh, it's so boring. It's so bland. And no, good for you. Good. This should be crucified. Amen. This should be crucified. 